Well, hey, Darren Garman here, and welcome to the podcast this week. I am excited to bring you this video and audio version of the podcast. So glad you're with me and glad you're spending the time, especially before uh, we have an upcoming holiday weekend here. And many of you have probably made plans, and no matter where or how or when you're listening or watching to this week's podcast, I hope you... Uh, have a good holiday weekend or you had a good holiday weekend or you're having a good holiday weekend. Before we get into the podcast, make sure you get our property catalog. Um, I've been bugging many of you about getting this, especially those of you that have contacted me about uh, owning some apartments, uh, being one of my partners uh, among the 200 plus partners that we have right now in uh, 35 million dollars worth of real estate and it continues to grow as a matter of fact we just put another project under contract here at the end of last week so uh, if you've not gotten your hands on the property catalog to see what you're frankly missing out on uh, you need to get your hands on it. it will give you a good idea of what we're up to uh, what you would be up to so to speak if you decided to uh, get involved with us. Uh, property catalog, don't forget to do that. And if you want to get that, I can actually have that emailed to you. Makes it pretty easy. Uh, just email my office. Um, all that contact information is everywhere, so finding me is no problem. And getting that contact information from my office to get that information to you um, will definitely do it. Also, if you have not checked out our Iowa magazine, you need to. Okay, you need to check this out. Now, no, I don't have an ownership interest in the magazine, or do I have a cousin that, you know, is a manager there? Nothing like that. Uh, just let me give you an idea of some of the things that are in here. Uh, here's something. Here's an article. The farm was her kingdom. Okay, talking about a lady growing up on a farm here in Iowa. Uh, here's another one. Oh, look at this. Oh, my goodness. Summertime along our byways and back roads, okay? Uh, one of the places that they talk about in here is a place that I love, which is the Iowa Great Lakes up in Okoboji, West Okoboji Lake, as a matter of fact. Um, I mean, the pictures are phenomenal, and uh, the articles are very, very interesting, and you can get an idea of what the heck why I came back to Iowa there's an interesting article um, with a picture of the farm and the rainbow in the background so I'm just telling you our Iowa magazine is um, I'm sure if you go online I'm trying to find their website here we send this to our partners quite uh, consistently so they get an idea of what's going on here in the state of Iowa what's been happening uh, what they um, frankly maybe are missing out on uh, by not coming here more often and checking things out and being involved in the lifestyle here. Uh, this is what we get to them. I mean, they get probably six issues a year uh, of the magazine, and I can tell you they absolutely love it. You would, too. Make sure you check that out. And again, our partners get this um, from me. Okay, I want to get into the subject matter of our podcast today, and it really has to do with, well... Um, really has to do with this. This is a million dollar bill. Probably see that there. Uh, it has to do with money and investing. And it's the three most valuable things you can know about investing. Okay, The three most valuable things you can know about investing. I'm boiling it down to three. I mean, it could be 20 actually. But let's boil it down to three. And, you know, in my 25 plus years of experience, not only in the investment real estate world, but uh, being involved as a bank owner, a board of director member, and I mean, I actually sat on the credit committee. And what that means is anytime somebody would apply for a loan, we'd get all their information, not only about them, you know, I call it the DNA test. I mean, we basically got every piece of information, maybe except the DNA test from these folks, to uh, you know get an idea if this is uh, something we wanted to lend money on. Maybe it was a property, maybe it was a business, uh, I mean, a whole variety of things. And so I can tell you that there are more than three, frankly, things that you really need to know 
uh, but I'm going to boil it down to three. And it's probably what I would call my top three. And, uh, and I think if anybody follows this, uh, this information, these three things, I don't think you're going to be perfect. Uh, nobody is. Um, I, but I do think it will help you make decisions faster, make more profitable decisions, um, and have an overall better, uh, better investment life as well. Okay. And so when it comes to um, the most valuable lessons anyone can know about investing, uh, look, you can, listen, you can uh, listen to as many videos as you want, watch as many YouTube videos, audios. These three things are going to be sticking around for a long time. Number one, who do you listen to? Or another way to put it, make sure you think about who you listen to for investment advice. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, do they have experience with any kind of investment you plan on getting involved in in order for them to qualify in giving you advice? Okay, um, I can name a hundred examples of mistakes I see where people get investment advice from people that have had absolutely no experience with that investment, whether it's a property, whether it's a business. Um, I mean, there's, there, there's a whole bunch of different examples. But to get advice on investing, especially in a property, from someone that's never owned any investment real estate is, is really kind of pretty, it's pretty stupid, really. So it would be like, and here, here's a big mistake a lot of people make. They will call and talk to a relative call or email, FaceTime, whatever, a relative about it. So I see this a lot. So let's say someone is interested in investing in an apartment building, uh, either maybe one of our partnerships, maybe joining me as a partner, or maybe buying their own building. And they call their brother. They like to get their brother's advice. Uh, maybe their brother's worked for a company for 25, 30 years, and uh, maybe uh, the brother is considered to be a smart guy, but the brother has never owned a piece of real estate other than his own condo that he's lived in for 35 years. Okay. Well, a lot of times somebody will call up the brother to get brother's advice on whether they should buy an eight-unit apartment building. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. Why? Obviously, the brother doesn't know. You see this happening among relatives all the time. I'll never forget when uh, my wife Gina and I, when we decided to buy our first house, okay, had the money saved, credit's great, all is good, we decide we're going to buy our first house. Um, so who do we decide to bring in to help uh, walk around and look at properties in a city with, you know, neighbors all over the place, I mean, Cedar Rapids, Marion area is about 250,000 people. So for some of you that may be large, others you may be thinking, gee, sorry you live in such a small town. Um, but who did we decide to call? We called my mother and father-in-law. Love them, they're great people. Glad to have them join us. However, the only piece of real estate they've ever owned is a small farmhouse in Kasuth County, Iowa. Okay, so bringing them here to walk through all of these houses in Cedar Rapids, Marion, was a complete disaster. Do you think they liked any house we looked at? No, they didn't. Do you think they found 25 different things wrong with every house we looked at? Yes, they did. And by the way, they even wanted to make sure that we understood that they didn't think we should buy a house after all. We're too young. We need to save our money, etc., etc., etc. Oh my God, what a mistake that was. Well, we ended up buying a house and everything worked out just fine. Okay. So I see people doing this kind of thing a lot. If you want investment advice, especially when we're talking big money, you don't want to be getting advice from people that don't have experience with what you're dealing with. Find the people that have the experience and talk to them. Okay. Talk to them. Okay. So that's number one. Okay, number two. It has to do with history. Okay, and it's remembering your history. So remember history. Now, even if you didn't really like history in high school or college, 
Uh, I actually did. I actually liked history, and there was a while there I thought I was going to be a history teacher, believe it or not. Um, for a few years, I thought that's what I was going to do when I was um, still in high school. But even if you don't like history, you really need to remember it before you make an investment. Because you need to do a little bit of research, you need to think back a little ways and find out what has happened with this particular investment before. Okay? What has happened before? Why? Because most investments follow a cycle, don't they? Okay? Does every investment continue to go up in value year after year? No. Investments are like this, right? They're like this. They never, it doesn't matter what the investment is, it doesn't matter. It never continues to go up every year forever. It doesn't. There's always cycles. So you need to be thinking about and looking into the historical cycles of any investments that you want to get involved in. So let's just name a couple. Uh, I, I, I'm a real estate guy, so I think real estate. So the big one for me, the big cycle for investment real estate is not what you think. So when I say that, you're probably thinking, oh yeah, the housing crash, 2005, 2009, 2009, and property values plummeted and all that. No, that actually wasn't the biggest real estate crash in my mind because apartment buildings really weren't affected that much. That was mainly single family homes and single family home developments, condo developments too. Okay, but <clears throat> apartment multifamily properties in most markets stayed pretty strong. I mean, here in Iowa, when all the real estate values are crashing, our apartment buildings are just chugging along. They're doing just fine. And so I'm thinking more in terms of when did the apartment multifamily market really hit the skids? And that was back in the early 80s when there was something brought in called the Resolution Trust Corporation. Okay, Resolution Trust Corporation. Why? Because in the early 80s and into the mid 80s and then into the early 90s, there were institutions called savings and loans, and many of you are familiar with what I'm talking about. And I'm not going to give a history lesson, even though I'm talking about history, but savings and loans basically went upside down. The government created the Resolution Trust Corporation to come in and bail everybody out that was going to be losing billions and billions of dollars. As a result of that, commercial properties and apartment properties especially decreased in value 50, 60, even 70 percent. Great time to be a buyer, by the way. Great time to be a buyer when that happens. Um, but that's the biggest in my mind. So when I'm expanding my holdings, when my, my partners and I are looking at buying more real estate and we're adding more, or deciding what we're going to sell. I'm keeping that in mind. Okay, Where do you, I think we are in this cycle right now? Because there could come a time where values of apartments aren't going to keep going up and up and up and up and up and up. Okay, That's one of the main reasons why when we buy them, we borrow so little money when we do, because even though we know times are good now, um, there's a pretty good chance, based on history, that something could come up and upset the apple cart a little bit and we want to be prepared for it. So, know your history about the investment that you're going to be making. Whether it's a business, whether it's a certain kind of property, whether it's a certain kind of investment. I mean, if you're invested in tech stocks or, re or online internet stocks, I hope you remember all of the internet crashes that happened in the 90s. Everybody was going to be, everybody had a website, a startup, that was losing money, especially the pet stores, right? How many pet stores were there online? And did the dot bomb blast happen? So if you're an investor and you're into stocks, especially heavy with retailers, online retailers, you want to be thinking about that. You want to be keeping that in the back of your mind as you continue to look at opportunities. Okay, so number one, again, who are you listening to? You want to make sure they have experience, not have just read about it, not have just heard about it, not had a friend that dealt with it, personal experience in the kind of investment that you plan on getting involved in. That's number one. And number two, 
know your history with the investment that you plan on making. Okay, now I said there's three. Okay, here's a third. The third one, it's actually, I mean, this isn't such a big secret. I mean, you're going to say, well, yeah, Darren, I know. But a lot of us are going to say to themselves, well, I knew that. I know that. But how many of us really do it? And that is, don't follow the herd. Okay? Don't follow the herd. Don't do what everybody else is doing. I mean, if you want to ever find out what you shouldn't do, you see what everybody else is doing, and you do the opposite, pretty much. Okay? Pretty much. And so, the worst thing you can do as an investor is get an idea and see what everybody else is doing, and just plunge into it head first because everybody else is. So, uh, a couple of examples on that. So right now, stock market, all-time high. Lots of markets, NASDAQ, they're all at all-time high. Okay, Why is it an all-time high? I mean, we could get really detailed and say, well, a lot of companies are doing a lot of buybacks and they're feeding the market and there's a lot of that going on. And, you know, depending on which pundit you listen to on CNBC or any other talk show, we could come up with a hundred different reasons, right? But the point is, it's not going to keep going up. And the main reason it's going up and continuing to set records is because everybody's doing it, right? Everybody's doing it. And the more that everybody does it, the worse it's going to be. Because ultimately, there's always the day of reckoning, and what everybody has done is going to come back and blow up. And it happens a lot. Okay. Um, stock market's one. Let's use real estate. Let's use real estate as an example of what everybody was doing. So I remember um, this was 2006. I went to a conference in um, Orlando, Florida. And I'm in a taxi from the airport going to the hotel. So I arrived at uh, Orlando International, uh, got in a taxi cab, and they're taking me to the hotel. So I'm having a conversation with the cabbie. And the cabbie says to me, are you buying any real estate? Because I told him I was in the real estate business. We're just chatting. And, and I said, well, you know, we're looking, we're looking at apartment properties. And he was telling me that his, his plan of how he buys properties and flips them without ever taking title to them. Okay, so he was giving me advice on how to do this and how I should be doing this when I get back to Iowa. And he laid out his plan for me. He was telling me about all that he does. I mean, it was a little lengthy cab ride, but he was telling me everything. And so I got out of the cab and walked into the hotel and right then and there, and not because I'm a smart guy, and not because I had just this revelation, but I thought, real estate's in trouble. Real estate's in big trouble. If the cabbie is giving me real estate advice on buying and selling and turning real estate, we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. Okay, why? Because everybody was doing it, and we saw the effects of that with the real estate crash, especially with single family homes and condos, didn't we? I mean, it was something else. I mean, what we ran into, oddly enough, we ran into issues getting financing for our properties. Our properties were operating fine. They were doing well, but a lot of lenders were also heavily into uh, securitizing uh, just big old groups of loans on houses, okay? So you name the bank, they'd buy $10 billion worth of loans that were all secured by single family homes. Well, when those values started to crash, that affected their whole business. So not only were they bleeding from a single family home standpoint, now they had to stop the presses on other loans that they were doing. I remember specifically, we worked with Bank of the West. So Bank of the West, who's still in business today, we were three days before a closing on a $3,200,000 property, and we were borrowing, I don't know, two million bucks, and three days before closing, closing statements are done, we're ready to just, it's formality now, you just sign and we're done. They call up our title company and say, we're not making this loan now. 
we're, we're not making the loan because of what was going on in the market. It had nothing to do with our properties. It had nothing to do with that. It, everything appraised fine. Everything worked out great there. But they just said, we are out of the lending business for the foreseeable future until we can put this fire out. Um, interesting. So those three things. Let me, hit them let, me, let me hit them one more time for you. Okay. Number one, who are you listening to? Okay. Important. They got to have the experience. Number two, remember your history. Okay. Remember your history with the particular kind of investment that you plan on getting involved in. And number three, don't do what everybody else does. Don't follow the investment herd because ultimately it will come back to bite you in the ass. Yes, it will. Okay. And so I want to thank you for joining me on this video audio version of the Paranoid Banker Podcast. Have a great day. Have a great rest of your week. Or if you're heading into the weekend, I hope you have a great weekend. And again, don't forget, if you have not gotten our holdings catalog, make sure you get in touch with us so we can get that to you. And then, once again, the R. Iowa Magazine, you got to get your hands on it. It is awesome. It is awesome. I mean, look at those kids. Look how cute those kids are in that picture. Well, that's just awesome. All right. Have a great day, everybody. We'll talk to you later, and we'll see you. Take care. Bye-bye.